Hello, Stan Yan here. I'm going to show you how I'm inserting the villain into my Vincent Price comic book project. The first thing I've done is to go back to my original Photoshop files for each page and turn the eyeball off on all the layers that don't contain the villain. I'm also turning off all of the effects layers so that all that remains is my line art. The next thing I'm going to do is to merge the layers I want to convert to blue line. Go to the uh, Image uh, Adjustments and Selective Color. And uh, if you choose from the uh, uh, presets, uh, the blue line function, voila. Now that all of these are in the, uh, in the same layer, you can apply it to all of these layers. Um, then what I'm going to do here is, uh, in my Layers menu, is to uh, convert this layer to a single opacity of about 30%. So when I print it out, the uh, blue line printouts will look a little bit like this. And this is actually what I'm going to uh, hand draw the drawings over. Before drawing my uh, villain into the book, uh, I do a little bit of sketching based on photo references. So now I actually pencil and ink um, my drawings right over the blue lines. Uh, unfortunately, I thought I had uh, recorded the pencils for you to see, but uh, we'll just go right to the inks. I'm going to go ahead and adjust these. So when I scan them in, I go to Adjustments and Threshold to bump the contrast and basically push every pixel to either black or white. Um, this will allow me to more easily extract the uh, line work onto another layer. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and convert modes to uh, CMYK color. That way I have a um, uh, the ability to extract just the black channel um, out of my channel. So uh, let's go ahead and create uh, a layer from the background and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, um, under channels, uh, I may, well actually you'll see I've already made a copy of the, uh, the uh, uh, black channel when no one was looking. <laughs> see it says black copy right there. Um, so, uh, but what you would do normally is select the black, right click, uh, and then, and then uh, duplicate that channel. And what I'm going to do here is uh, let's go ahead and add new layer. And uh, this is where I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, select or, or load that black copy so that you can see I've selected all of the black line work. And on this new layer, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill it with um, my black foreground color. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the eyeball off on my original drawing so you can kind of see with the transparency in place what I've done here. All right, now that we've prepared our replacement inks, uh, we're going to go ahead and insert them into the strip. So. Now the previous step, we actually created just the inks on a separate layer. I'm going to go ahead and select it from the scan file and copy it over, uh, copy and paste it over into the comic uh, page. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, arrange some of the image files into separate folders. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call that new. And then uh, I'm going to create a folder called old where I'm going to take all of the villain image files and group them under there so that when I've created the new replacement images, uh, I can just go ahead and turn off the eyeball on that one. So we'll go ahead and label this one inks, drag it up into the new folder, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition this and resize a little bit since it's uh, not quite the right size. So 
Let me go ahead and um, hide a few things here as well, just to make it a little bit easier for me to um, see what I'm doing. And I can go ahead and also, uh, um, maybe on the old image files, uh, change the opacity a little bit so that uh, uh, I can just fine tune a few things here. All right, so let's go ahead and apply these changes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, close out the old. So all we've got left now is black line work in this panel. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a um, selection of just everything that's inside of the border. And then now we're going to check it to sample all layers so that I can do a subtractive um, magic wand selection and uh, so and then contract it a little bit just to trap all the uh, image behind our uh, ink work and what we're going to do is go ahead and um, paste uh, just white color or we ink bucketed white color and I dragged it underneath the ink layer and that's what we're going to use to flat our colors, which will be the uh, next spot in this tutorial. But before I do that, let me go ahead and take the uh, zombie caricature I did of our villain. And uh, I'm going to just copy and paste it into um, uh, our comic book page where the uh, character is holding it. Now you can see it's gigantic. I probably should have shrunk it a little bit before I put it in. But I can go ahead and go and transform it. So if I went to uh, image, transform, and scale, uh, we could go ahead, oh, right here. This is what I'm showing you right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, lock to make sure that all changes we make are um, proportional. And uh, as, if I get, when I get it close, I'm going to go ahead and drag it up in that direction, shrink it a little bit more, and then I'm going to change the transform to uh, something called distort, where you can take any of the corner nodes and drag them anywhere, and it'll go ahead and stretch the image in whatever direction you want. Um, this is kind of similar to the perspective, but the the perspective transformation is a little bit too limiting for what I want to do here. So I, I tend to use distort a whole lot more than I, I use perspective. All right, as I finish up with uh, this part um, and apply our transformations, I'm going to jump over to another part of this page because I think it'd be, it's a little bit more illustrative because there's going to be a little bit more color. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the process that I'm going to use. So if I get on the um, flat uh, layer so that I can just go ahead and select with my magic wand the areas that I'm going to color, and that way I don't have to worry about... Um, uh, accidentally coloring outside the lines. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil tool, which is non-anti-aliased, which means that uh, every pixel that I color is like 100% the color I've chosen or 0%. And uh, this allows me to make wholesale selections without getting a strange mysterious halo if I decide to change my mind and, and uh, change the colors here. So I'm going to go ahead and just trace the areas here where I'm going to go ahead and apply the flesh tones. And uh, um, so the whole uh, reason I have uh, several different layers for my colors is first of all I want to kind of just get the basic colors down in my flat layers and uh, in my flat layer, uh, excuse me, and that'll allow me to say, okay, if I want to go ahead and change his ethnicity, so I'm going to change his skin color, I can just pick that color and bucket it in without um, worrying about it not uh, showing up correctly. And uh, so now you'll notice that I, uh, I had to redo the buckets for his, um, the paint bucket for his uh, shirt because it leaked into his hair. 
So that's one thing. If you have something being colored in a contiguous manner, then um, uh, you need to make sure to close up any holes that uh, as you're so if you're if you create a shape you can um, paint bucket in if there's a hole in there then all the paint will escape through that little hole so that's what I just closed up there so looks like I've got most of my flats done here now the next thing I'm going to do is to create another layer that I'm going to do some shadowing or highlighting on. So this is uh, my models. Now this is a uh, actually, and normally I don't do this, but uh, I'm kind of sharing all the layers with the uh, the character of my myself, so I don't have to create a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, there, I've got a, a preset for my pencil tool called Vel, which kind of gives um, more of a uh, kind of a pastel look and then I'm gonna change the opacity of it so that every time I go over um, this it'll make it darker and more saturated but uh, this is a, a a preset that I like to use to make my drawings look a little bit more organic So now you'll see right there, as I went over the same area twice, it got a little bit darker and more saturated. And I'm not absolutely sure if the shadow color is what I completely want going forward, but you'll see what I do um, in the next step to uh, kind of tweak the coloration so that uh, I've got a color scheme that I'm happy with. Now before I get to shading this, I, I kind of have to decide where my light source is coming from. And I, I figured that maybe the light source is coming from in between these characters. So the highlights on my face um, are on the inside um, shoulder as, as are his. There we go with my highlights. Now, I think I started with 20% opacity, but with the whites um, instead of the darks, I tend to find that uh, I like to um, make the opacity a little bit uh, um, more stark at 50%. So there's still an additive um, value to it, but if I go too small, it takes away some of the uh, organic um, aspects of the coloring and it smooths it out a little bit too much. So uh, as we finish up here, um, my very last step is I'm going to go ahead and turn on a layer that I've called a filter, which is really nice. I like it on a separate layer so that you can experiment with different filter effects. So that's it. Uh, stay tuned for more updates on this project and uh, make sure to visit my website at stanyan.me.